Hi there, Psycho Enthusiasts, and welcome to the next episode of Friday Psycho Best Practices. My name is Vasily Fomichev, and I'm a Psycho Technology MVP. In this episode, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about performance, uh, more specifically about a tool that Psycho has that can help you evaluate Psycho performance issues, website uh, performance issues, and that tool is Psycho Debugger. This week, I ran into a couple of developers actually that didn't know about the tool's existence, and that it's really what prompted me to make this video. So the Psycho Debugger is a little bit hidden, um, to be honest. So perhaps the reason why not many people are aware of it. To get to the Psycho Debugger, what you want to do is go into the Experience Editor, and once that loads, you want to click on the Other button in the top left corner, and notice there is a Debug button as the last option. And that's what I mean by hidden. If you don't know of its existence, it's not out there um, for you to notice it right away. So let's take a look at what we get with a Psycho Debugger. So first of all, notice there are a few things that we can activate. We can activate profile data. Uh, we can activate trace data, which is the .NET trace. Uh, and of course, borders and information, just like in the edit. So let's take a look at the profile. So first of all, the profile gives us valuable information about Psycore page composition. Starting from the top, here we have a report about the most time taken, um, the actions that take the most time. So here, since it's a very simple page, we're actually looking at inserting renderings into the page, taking more time than actually rendering them. So this is uh, this goes to another tip of uh, trying to stay away from overcomplicating the presentation layer. Uh, for instance, uh, adding uh, all of the components into the header instead of adding the header statically. Um, the same same goes for the footer. So the more components on the page you have, the higher the penalty um, of uh, the, that you get um, on a page by uh, Sitecore trying to insert all the components into the right placeholders. Uh, the penalty goes even higher if that placeholder does not exist, so make sure content authors clean up after themselves. So as you can see here, we have um, the top uh, components, most time taken, actions, and right below we have the profile data. So this is a very important information that can come, come in very handy uh, when you're looking at uh, evaluating performance. In fact, most of the time you can get away with uh, this without running a .NET profiler to, uh, in terms of identifying the, the issue. So let's see. So first of all, uh, then we have a column of the total time taken, own time, uh, items read. This is an important one, especially for components that do a lot of iterations or recursive iterations. Data cache misses, data cache hits. Um, of course, these are uh, referring to caching, so uh, perhaps these, uh, these could identify an opportunity for some caching, HTML caching, or other types of cache. Uh, and then uh, physical reads is, of course, actually um, actual reads of the records in the, um, in the database. So that is the profile report. Moving on down is the Psycore trace, and this is uh, uh, very close to the um, R.NET trace. So lapse since last entry and lapse since last start. So this is pretty much just the timing date on every step taking to put the page together. And this not only gives you the performance data, but sort of gives you the insight of the steps, uh, the things that Sitecore uh, requests go through to serve a web page. And at the bo bottom, of course, we have it all summed up and the debug collective time is 1.93 milliseconds. So a total time, is 163 and uh, the debug collection time is a little bit of a, a tiny overhead of 1.93 milliseconds. So as you can see this is a, a, a great tool for troubleshooting Psycho performance. You can also view uh, on top of viewing the reports you can view performance reports in, on individual components. Um, you can also uh, view the cache settings view the actual HTML output of the component. So very, very useful tool. Um, so hope you like this tip. Uh, make sure to 
Uh, you uh, keep this debugger in your toolbox whenever you run into performance issues. Especially, I recommend using this tool uh, to developers as they develop new components. More often than not, developers simply slap it together and throw it out there in the wild without actually doing a performance evaluation. What I recommend is once you've developed a component, take a look at the debugger. Take a look at the steps that it takes. Sometimes you uncover that it re uh, uh, recurses over way too many items that you expected even. Uh, or takes longer in certain areas than you expected uh, or even does actions uh, unforeseen or unintended actions. So keep it in, keep it in your pocket for day-to-day -day development and for performance testing. Alright, so again if you like this uh, uh, tip give me a thumbs up um, and uh, if you like the video subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, for more tips like this check out cmsbestpractices.com and in the meantime, I'll see you next Friday. Over and out.